Hello IB. Welcome to day two of Vectors in IBSL2. And tonight's topic is Vectors in Component Form and Vectors in Coordinate Geometry. We will also be talking about adding vectors and unit vectors and parallel vectors. So a lot of fun stuff tonight. Our textbook this um, topics for tonight are in page 360 to 370 in our textbook in case you want to uh, reference it later. So the first thing I want to talk about is the vectors and component form. And this came up a little bit with our last review. I know in my class, and I think in Miss Wonder's class too, we had a few problems with vectors and component form. So I want to uh, talk about that first. And remember with vectors that in the component phone form here, the x component is on the top and the y component is on the bottom. And also, um, if you're thinking of a real life example, and this could be an example of a ship moving in the northeastern direction or airplane or a car, but this um, introduction example is saying that this object is moving um, in the northeast directory direction at 32 degrees. So it's a little different the way it's written than we might see on a map. So I wanted to make sure you understand that when you have it in the northeast direction and it says 32, you start at north and you go 32 degrees. And that would be the direction that of our vector. And again, when you see it in component form, this would be the X component, and um, the second part would be the Y component. So just like you're used to on a coordinate plane. Okay, let's um, also talk about what the positive numbers mean and negative numbers. So if it has a positive um, value in the X, it would move in the positive direction that we're used to with the X, the horizontal, and that would be to the right. If it's a positive number and Y component, then it's going to be moving up in the positive direction. A negative number, remember, moves to the left when it's in the X component and then moves down when it's in the Y component. Also, it's important to remember that you start at the non-arrow end and move horizontally and or vertically to the arrow end. And we'll be talking more about that with some examples. So the starting point again is at the non-arrow end. Okay, here's a few examples. And um, our example of the vector 2, 3. Again, we have the x component is 2 and the y component is 3. So if we were going to draw that out, we'd first move, start our non arrow end. We would move 2 units um, to the right, and those look a little crooked. Let me fix that because it's moving in the positive direction and then three units up for the Y component. And our vector would go start here and our um, arrow would end at the end. So two units to the right for the X component because it's positive and three units up for the Y component because it's positive. Here is an example where we have 2 for the X component and 0 for the Y. And um, we would end up only moving in the X direction. So we have our starting point and just moving 2 units to, um, in the positive direction. And there would be no vertical movement because it's the 0 of our vector. OK. I want you to go ahead and um, try this one on your own and pause the video and then uh, come back. OK, so hopefully when you drew, you're in the negative direction 
for both ones. You got something similar to what I have here. And, and you should have moved one unit left for the negative direction and then five units down for the negative five component. So our arrow is starts here. I mean our endpoint starts here and our arrow is down here. Okay. All right, let's um, review some other items. And this is when we're having vector equations. And we have a, a vector AB and a vector CA. And they want us to find CB. So I think it's helpful to um, think about this graphically first. But um, CA, they want us to find from the vector CA to the vector AB. So we're going to have to start at, um, at CA here. And we'll be adding on AB. Okay, let's look at it graphically first. So if we're thinking about our vector CA, um, our X component will move, move two units to the right and then down one for the Y component. So here's our vector CA. And then it, um, we have vector AB. So from it's wanting us to find point C, um, vector CB. So th this way, we, if we use CA and AB, we'll be able to find our vector AB. So here's point C, and we end up at point A. And then, um, so here's our vector CA. And then AB would start here, and we're going to move left in the negative one direction and up three. And there's our point B. And I'm just going to move out our name for our vector a minute. Oh, I guess it's going to drag. Okay, well. So there's our CA. And adding AB would result in CB. And CB graphically we can see is vector 1 and for the X component and positive of 2 for the Y component. So let's uh, write that down and see if we get the same thing algebraically. So there's two ways to find our vectors and we should be able to do both. And one is graphically adding our, um, so we had CA, AB um, to find CB. Let's do it algebraically. So when we have vectors, remember when we're doing algebraically, we want to line up our um, points here. So we're wanting to find CB. So we're going from C to B. So we have vector CA plus our vector AB. So that is important when we're trying to find our resultant vector. So um, we just add our, our X components and our Y components when we're adding vectors. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite these. This is vector CA and vector AB. And 2 plus negative 1 is 1. And negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So we found vector CB algebraically, and we found it graphically. So I'm going to have you go ahead and try a problem. And this one has a little different parts to it. I want you to go ahead and think about it. We need to find SP. So notice we have three vectors this time, and we're trying to find SP. So think about what you learned in class yesterday or the night before or the day before and how you're going to find SP. Okay.
go ahead and pause the mini movie, I mean the video, and try that. Okay, let's um, let's look at it algebraically first this time first. So algebraically, um, when you think of sp, we need to to use all these vectors. We need to go from s to point to p. So we have sr vector. We need plus rq plus qp. Now we don't have sr, but we have rs. So we can multiply by um, a negative one by our um, for a scalar to get rs. Rq we have is the same. And then we can do two things. We could multiply by a negative one um, to pq, or we can just subtract pq, whatever is easier to you. So I'm going to go ahead and first start with making this uh, negative rs, because we want sr. So I just multiply negative 1 by both um, x and the y component. So negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, and 2 times um, negative 1 is negative 2. And then rq is the same vector. And then we're going to subtract our pq. Okay, so then we just add the x component, so 3 plus 2 minus a negative 1, and that would be 6. For our y component, we have negative 2 plus 1 minus 4, which would result in negative 5. Let's go ahead and look at how it would look uh, graphically. And um, if we remember, negative rs would be 3 and the x component and negative 2 for the y. So 3, we move in the right positive direction, so right 3, and then negative 2, we've moved down 2. So there's our vector, it's in black for negative rs. From there, we're going to add on our rq. So our rq was um, 2 to the right, and then up 1. So rq is shown in blue. And then um, negative pq would be um, positive 1 and negative 4. So positive 1 and then down 4. So negative pq is shown in green. And our resultant vector would start at the uh, first point and end here. Our arrow would be there. So that's our red. That's sp. Okay, and you notice that we got the same answer um, algebraic and graphically. So the red, as you can see, the x component is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the y component is negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's look at a couple more things. The first one is magnitude, and remember um, we find magnitude um, using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and write that down. Okay, so our magnitude, remember we're looking for the length or the size of a vector, and um, we're always looking at a right um, angle. So we'll be using the Pythagorean theorem to find this length. And this is terminology for asking for the magnitude. Um, remember that these parallel line, that notation means parallel, magnitude of vector and absolute value. And the formula would be um, the square root of the x component squared plus um, the y component squared. So just like we would use the Pythagorean theorem because we're solving for the hypotenuse. Okay. Um, there's a couple examples. I think we'll do these in class. We do need to know a few other things. The first one is a unit vector is any vector which is one unit long. And our special unit vectors i and j, um, they are unit vectors in the positive direction. Also, two vectors are parallel. Then one is a scalar multiple of another. So please write this definition down. 
we'll be practicing this in uh, class. Um, have a great night.